They are made in two basic styles to cover all applications. Free running helicoil are similar to a conventional tapped hole, allowing the screw or bolt to pass through freely. The screw lock helicoil has one or more coils deformed, which initially prevents the screw from passing through. A spanner is required to overcome the prevailing torque. The screw lock helicoil is the answer to many adjustment and vibration problems. Helicoils are available in many different materials to cover a vast range of applications. Stainless steel for normal use, Mnemonic 90 for high temperature locations, these require special tooling. Phosphor bronze for non-magnetic applications. S316 stainless for greater salt water resistance. Inconnel X750, a high temperature insert favored in America. There are many different external finishes. Cadmium plate for corrosion protection and as a lubricant. Zinc plate, now beginning to take over from cadmium. Silver plate, forming an anti-seize barrier for threaded parts subjected to high temperatures. Dry film lubricant for the ultimate in reducing friction. The Armstrong helicoil system is based on good engineering practices and provides hole preparation, gauging, and installation. A specified limits drilled hole must be tapped for the helicoil thread. This should not be confused with a standard thread. A slightly larger than normal hole is required. Five types of tap are available to cover most situations. A roughing tap will tap the hole slightly smaller than the finished size. It must be followed by one of the other four taps. A finishing tap, often called a hand, second or plug tap, is probably the most popular. It can be used by hand, in a machine, or in a blind hole, where because of its lead threads it will require to be tapped deeper. A bottoming tap, which is similar to the finishing tap, but with less lead threads primarily used in blind holes. It is recommended that a roughing tap be used first. The short lead makes it difficult to start, leading to bell-mouthing and off-square tapping. A spiral flute tap is a true machine tap designed for use in aluminium. The short lead feature of the bottoming tap is incorporated. The swarf is channeled out of the hole, allowing it to be used for blind or through-hole tapping. A spiral point tap is a true machine tap. The swarf is pushed out through the bottom of the hole. It should never be used in a blind hole. Swarf would build up in the bottom of the hole, become compacted and eventually break the tap. It is preferable to gauge the tapped hole as opposed to the finished assembled hole. If the tapping is incorrect, then corrective action can be taken. If the finished hole gauges incorrectly, the helicoil must be removed and replaced. Remember, the diamond wire section is controlled to six microns. Whatever the class of fit in the tapped hole, the helicoil will faithfully reproduce it. There are two classes of gauges for each application. Metric threads, classes 5H and 6H. Unified, in classes 3B and 2B. Whitworth, in close and medium. When using helicoil screw lock inserts, it is preferable to use the closer class of fit. It permits the locking coil to work as specified within these tighter controls. Gauges are double-ended. One end is the go, which should pass completely through the tapped hole, checking the lower limit of the effective diameter. The no-go end checks the upper limit. It should not pass through. Standard gauging practice states that it can't enter the hole by more than two and a half turns. Gauges are precision instruments and should be treated as such. Extreme or white knuckle force when gauging is not good practice. 
Inserting the helicoil into a tapped hole is a relatively easy operation. Successful installation is dependent on having a properly prepared hole, using the correct tool with a good end form, never pushing whilst installing, let the insert do the work and above all be gentle. Installation tools come in many forms to cover most production requirements. The occasional use tool, as its name implies, is not used very often. It is frequently used on large, coarse-pitched inserts. Care is needed when starting the insert, as there is no pre-winder. The budget-priced hand tools are available in kit form, mainly for do-it-yourself use. It takes longer to set up and install the insert, but the end result is the same. Remove the mandrel from the body. Pop the insert over the threads. Engage the tang on the driving abutment. Replace the body and wind the insert into the pre-winder until it is flush with the end. A useful tip. Put your thumb over the end of the nozzle to feel when the insert reaches the end. Place the tool squarely over the tapped hole. Wind the insert in. Feel the twisting force on the body relax as it leaves the pre-winder. Lift the body. Wind it in further to just below the surface. Unscrew the tool. The helicoil is installed. The standard hand tool is the most commonly used tool in industry, dedicated to one thread size, and with practice it is relatively quick. Unlike previous tools, mandrel removal is not required. Simply retract the mandrel clear of the chamber and insert the helicoil. Notice the tang goes towards the nozzle. Wind insert into pre-winder. Remember your thumb over the nozzle end. Place it over the hole. Another tip, don't hold the body too tightly. As you start winding into the hole, any misalignment will correct itself. Remember do not push. Let the helicoil do the work. As you wind the handle, the pitch of the insert will follow the tapped hole. Another tip. Use two fingers on the handle to evenly distribute the pressure and not pull the tool out of line. Feeling the pressure relax, lift the body clear to see the end of the helicoil. When it is flush, Give the mandrel a quarter to half a turn. The insert is now correctly installed. Coarse pitch inserting tools generally have plain mandrels and can be withdrawn simply by pulling out. When using large tools, install inserts horizontally. Vertical installation may cause the leading coil to jump threads. If this happens, pull back slightly on the tool to reduce the weight on the tang. Don't use the tool to break the tang by turning the mandrel backward. It will break off the tang and break the tool. Fine pitched tools have threaded mandrels which unscrew out. They may seem a pain to remove, but they do guarantee the insert does not cross pitch. Now we start on high speed production. The electric power tool is really an automatic tapping tool, operating from 240 volts AC, transformed down to 24 volts DC, allowing it to be used anywhere. It has an adjustable torque mechanism. When the torque is reached, the tool automatically goes into reverse, unscrewing the mandrel out of the insert. Another tip, set the depth by setting the depth stop well back. Install an insert without power. 
check the depth is right. Then, with mandrel back in driving position, wind depth stop down to face of job. Tighten the lock nut, and away you go. The clutch should be set so that the insert will fully install. It has to be done by trial and error. Don't set the torque too high, or you may wipe off the tang during installation. With practice, this tool can be very, very quick. But beware, it should not be used with screw lock inserts, and it's not available in smaller diameters. It is essential when using electric power tools to ask for RD, reduced diameter inserts. Pneumatic power tools are air operated and can be used with free running and screw lock inserts. This tool uses the pre-winder principle for installing the inserts. It can be set up in a cantilever arm arrangement for more accurate positioning or handheld for greater flexibility. Place an insert in the chamber. Position the end of the tool over the hole. Press the forward lever. The mandrel rotates, drives forward, picking up the helicoil on its way through the pre-winder. Reaching the correct depth, it will stop. Hold down the lever. Press the button. The mandrel reverses, leaving the insert in the hole. When the mandrel stops in the back position, both lever and button are released. When you master this technique, it is possible to retract the mandrel just enough to get the next insert in without going back fully. If the mandrel is powered forward without an insert, it disengages the pitch nut thread. If you try to reverse the mandrel, it will just spin. Don't worry. Turn the tool upside down, press both buttons. The mandrel drops down into the pitch nut thread and retracts. If the tool is fixed, use your steel rule to lift up the mandrel to engage the pitch nut. Tape feed inserts can be used for even faster production. The helicoil inserts are pre-assembled in polyethylene tape. Passing it through the pre-winder presents a new insert ready for installation. Tape feed inserts eliminate fiddling, untangling inserts, dropping them and orientating the tang. Installation depth is set using spacers and shims. Remove the front end assembly. Watch out for left hand threads. Unscrew mandrel from pre-winder. Slide on the correct spacer set. Add or remove shims to give the correct insert depth. Reassemble and check setting. Add a shim if the insert is too deep. 0.5 and 0.25 millimeter shims are available. Watch out for countersinks. Now the helicoil is in the hole, the driving tang is of no further use. It has to be removed. There are a number of ways to remove the tang, some good, some bad. A manual tang break-off punch, or TBO, fits snugly inside the insert, resting on the tang. A sharp tap with a hammer will break it off at the tang notch. On a screw lock insert, the TBO has to pass through the locking coil. Do not try and force a punch through it. Automatic Tang Break-Off, or ATBO, is designed on the principle of the automatic center punch. It snaps off the tang when the body is depressed. A spring-loaded slug is fired onto the end of the punch. The resultant force breaks off the tang. On high volume production, use ATBO after a batch of inserts have been installed. Now, don't try this, even at home. Some users of threaded mandrel inserting tools have tried to use them as TBOs. The threads are engaged, the mandrel cannot move forwards. A gentle tap on the end of the mandrel is used, attempting to break the tang. The gentle tap becomes heavier and heavier. The mandrel bends first, giving a good indication of how strong the helicoil really is. A plain mandrel inserting tool is often used as a TBO. This method is not recommended. 
The mandrel is lifted off the tang, turned through 90 degrees, rested back on the tang and given a sharp tap. Don't use tools below a quarter diameter. The driving legs are delicate and they will break. On larger inserts, it's impractical to use a TBO due to its size and weight. It is possible to get hold of the tang with a pair of long-nosed pliers. Hold the tang and agitate it up and down. The tang will fracture at the notch. Tangs should be removed before inserting screws to avoid damage. Stainless steel tangs can be removed by using a magnet. Having inserted a helicoil, there may be a need to remove it. If the tang hasn't been broken off, wind it all the way through. Discard it. It will be damaged. To remove an insert after service, take the extraction tool. Place it on the helicoil with the blade a quarter turn back from the end of the coil. Press down and turn backwards. Unwind the insert. Before replacing the helicoil, re-tap the hole to clean up any thread damage. If several attempts have failed to remove the insert, use a sharp scriber to force out the coil end. Bring it round to form a crude tang and reinsert the extraction tool to wind it out. Remember to re-tap the hole. Now we've seen the tricks of the trade, let us run over the main points again. A good drilled hole free of swarf is essential, followed by a good tapped hole free of swarf. Then, if the hole gauges right, the insert will be a quality fit. Install the insert properly, making sure it is square in the hole. Let it find the start of thread. Don't hold it too tight. It must not jump a pitch. Don't push. It must fit to the right depth, a quarter to half a turn below the surface. Fit the tang break-off tool correctly. And finally, remove the tang.